connect with all the other stuff. And now we are back in. All right. So as I was saying, guys, uh, we are here with a 2v2. Miguel and Dugal versus the two Irish brothers, Matthias and Timotheus, playing together here. And this is going to be a live game, which is just being played, I guess, as a friendly, as a casual on Voobly right now. Uh, we'll introduce the players, go around and see what's up. In the south of the map, in the green, we've got Miguel playing as the Britons. And in the west of the map, we have Dogao in the blue playing as the Japanese. And you probably saw these guys playing... Yes, uh, no, not yesterday, on Sunday. Because both of these guys are in Team Brazil B, the team that managed to take down Brazil A on the weekend with a fantastic showing. A clean sweep and they are they're looking super strong right now they're on form and uh, maybe it's all these 2v2s that they're doing all these friendly 2v2s helping to hone their performance for their team games but uh, yeah Degal Miguel down to the south and west and up to the north and the east we've got uh, in the yellow Timotheus uh, playing as the Brits and to the east Matthias playing as the Japanese in the red and you know these guys I'm interested to see how they'll perform. I think, obviously, in a 2v2, teamwork is extra important. You've really got to coordinate your attacks. You've really got to, um, you know, get your armies together in the right place at the right time. And I think it's it's easier. The, the, more gate, the more players you add to the game, right? So when you go from a 1v1 to a 2v2, and then when you go from a 2v2 to a 3v3 and a 3v3 to a 4v4... Um, the less the individual skill is so important. And I think in a 1v1 against Dugal, both of these guys would probably um, lose to Dugal. I think in a 1v1, pure skill-wise, uh, Dugal is, is ahead. But when you start to add more players into the game, that's kind of offset a little bit. And, well, at least that's my belief anyway. And, it, you know, the, the team is kind of diluted a little bit more. And uh, that's not to say that, that Miguel is... Uh, a bad player or something and that he's diluting Dugao's skill level but I think in a 2v2 and in a 3v3 and a 4v4 like the more players you add uh, the more it becomes about teamwork and how and the more team play can be rewarded versus just raw talent and skill of the players if that makes sense uh, Jaden, when will I leave for Germany? I'll be leaving for Germany on Saturday, the 19th, the Saturday coming up at about four o'clock in the morning. So I won't be doing a very long stream on Friday because on Friday um, I am due to stream at the same time, 16 GMT, same place, same time as always, guys. But obviously I'm going to be getting up super early and I'm not going to pull an all-nighter because I have a busy day on Saturday as well. Otherwise I would consider that. Uh, however, since I've got to be up and about and doing on Saturday in Germany when I get there I will be getting a, an early night on Friday and I'll, I'll do a short stream just so I can keep up with the, the stream schedule I want to make sure that I commit to doing the schedule you know I don't want to make a schedule and then fail to commit to it a, after one week uh, obviously next week I'll be in Germany and I won't be able to stream from my PC and I won't be able to stream Age of Empires but I might be able to stream a little bit from my phone as I've been saying um, I did look into that last night and it seems like streaming with 4G and your iPhone is is pretty legit so I'll give it a go we do some IRL streams I can show you the behind the scenes at the Microsoft event on Monday which is going to be really cool the Age of Empires 20 year celebration, which I haven't really talked about that much or posted much about, but I will put information out there about that before it happens. Uh, basically, Killer B and I will be uh, taking part in an event which Microsoft are hosting uh, in Cologne on the Monday, Monday the 22nd, I believe, or the Monday, next Monday, or the Monday coming up. And that's going to be streamed live. It's going to be about an hour show, I believe. There's going to be a bunch of different people there. Um, I believe Cision will be there, the Forgotten Empires team. Um, and they're going to do some, sh I think they're going to show some definitive edition maybe. There's going to be an Age of Empires 2 segment, which Killer B and I will be involved in. Um, I'm not going to spoil what we're going to do and what we're going to show. Um, but we're going to do some like Age of Empires 2 stuff, part of the stream. And I'll maybe stream some behind the scenes there. I mean, I can do a little like on the fly interviews with people if you like i can go and say hi to decision and drag some people into to interview that could be really cool and then obviously i'll show you the behind the scenes at gamescom as well because gamescom is starting on wednesday but it's already being set up so the gamescom stage and stuff is being set up as we speak right now 
and I'll be there all throughout the week and the weekend with Killer B um, setting up for the Gamescom LAN, which we're hosting, and that will be streamed live on Saturday. So lots of lots of exciting stuff next week, but obviously streaming will be in a little bit of a different format. You should get an Instagram for that event to let us experience it. I have an Instagram rancor. You can follow me on Instagram at Zero Empires and on Snapchat and on Facebook and on Twitter and on you can find me at Zero Empires basically everywhere. I don't think uh, I don't think I haven't got a social media account that hasn't got at Zero Empires. So it's all good. And uh, yeah, so at the moment we're just kind of chilling here. There's not really a lot of action at the moment. Everybody's just building up as you do. Everybody is fairly close together in village accounts, etc. And we're starting to see the first sort of engagements breaking out across the map. Miguel sending his skirmishes out. And this is kind of interesting that everybody is just going for full skirms. <laughs> Yellow and red opening with full skirms. Miguel doing the same. Is this like some unspoken rule that they're playing? Skirmisher only. Fight me 1v1 mid. Skirmisher only. Could be. Could be. On the right side, we've got a little bit of a fight. Uh, nine, like everyone's completely even. Everybody's got nine military, basically. Everyone's got the same number of ills. Obviously, the scouts in here can be quite pivotal. to Gao and Miguel bringing their scouts in, but uh, Mateus did bring a spearman as well, so he's armed to the teeth. And those scouts uh, probably won't have much impact in that fight, I feel. But Mateus is a little bit down in numbers if skirms. Uh, but I think he'll end up winning the fight anyway here since his scout does remain and Miguel will back away. So Miguel with five kills, five losses. Mateus with five kills and five losses. Uh, but that fight's going to start going the way of Mateus here as the scout. Actually, I don't know. I don't know. Let's look away from that and check on the left side. Miguel in here defending with a good number of skirms as well. And uh, he's got the same number of skirms as Timotheus. So can someone explain to me what is happening? <laughs> Everybody is full scam. Everyone has the same number of scams. Everyone has the same number of villagers. It's quite something. Zach, what mod are you using for the, the floor? I'm using the enhanced terrains on Voobly. That's the the mod that's uh, in action right here. Hello, T90. How's it going? Um, this isn't the Wallolo mod, no. We did play some Wallolo mod earlier, though, which was pretty good. But this right here is just a, a friendly 2v2 between Degao, Miguel... And Timotheus Mateus. Um, their names are a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> I prefer to say the Brazilian names here. They're a little bit easier. Comes off the tongue a little, little bit easier. Um, do you, that... Hold on. Jaden said in the chat, do that post some kind of schedule on Discord for when you plan the IRLs? Yeah, I will. Um, I'll also be meeting T90 in Germany as well. And I'm sure I'll get him on camera. Do a little interview with, with T90 as well while we're there. Got it. Thanks. Yeah, man. Uh, we did do some good games earlier, though. The Aquino wrecked me in that last one we did. The, the King of the Hill game was pretty awesome, though. Had T West to bail me out. And then you know what it's like. King of the Hill, mass demolition ships, all that good stuff. Very enjoyable games. I, I love that. I made a custom map, T90. Uh, it's basically like the King of the Hill Regicide one that you did, but... The gold has 2,000 gold in each pile. And the monument, when you control it, you can actually train a hero unit from it as well, which is pretty cool. It's quite expensive, but it's really strong. And so it puts more emphasis on actually controlling the middle as well, since I think the regicide part is a little bit too... I don't know. Like People want to kill people via regicide in that game mode because it's faster. You can take someone out of the game really quickly if you kill their king, but if you want to win via monument control, you have to wait until the end of the, the timer. So a lot of people go for the king, but by controlling the monument, you can make the hero unit. So it kind of balances that out a bit. <laughs> I'm getting a haircut today, so you better interview me. Hell yeah, man. I will do. I will. I, I plan to stream from my phone on 4G. I, I've never done it before, but I think it'll be pretty good. Uh, what is also good is Mateus down here laying down the law, dominating Miguel. Look at that. Taking a good fight, pushing him away from the gold as well. He's, Miguel's finally moving towards the gold. He's thinking, hang on a minute. I probably should go towards the uh, the gold at some point in this game. I can't keep making skirmishes forever. But uh, Mateus here killing a villager. 
kiting them around and taking some really good fights versus these skirms. It's good micro. Keeping his units close, taking the hill versus these skirms, picking them off one by one. And Miguel will eventually clean this up, but at what cost? At what cost? Oh, the humanity. 26 kills and 19 deaths for the red player. And uh, maybe I was right at the start of the game. Maybe maybe Miguel is diluting uh, the, his team's skill level. And Miguel is, uh, is having to be the carry in this one. But even uh, Tim Opia has up in the top has a lot of uh, skirmishes. Uh, a greater number of skirmishes than Degao. Doing the pike patrol here. Look at this. Well, he kind of failed it right there. But he was pike patrolling to keep in range of these scans and get a few extra kills. The, uh, the Irish brothers doing a good job right here as they start to move to gold now as well. It's about time. I mean, everyone's just going to make scabs for the rest of the game. I mean, it would be kind of fun, but probably a little bit risky since once you get to the castle age, they'll be very easily cleaned up. Got to make more the trees with more wood in FFA. Exactly, Tristan. Because I think the... The games that you host, I don't know how, how you do it. Because when I host a free-for-all game, or like a King of the Hill game, it usually ends within about 50 minutes to an hour. They don't normally end up being massive stalemates. But like every game you host seems to be a huge stalemate. And then wood runs out. And the, the stalemate is broken by whoever's got the most trees on the map. Um, but obviously you can, with the user patch 1.5, you can change the amount of resources inside of the the trees or in the gold or in the stone whatever you like so obviously making the tree lines last longer as if you didn't want to put yourself through hell already with a three hour three hour king of the hill you can extend that just double the amount of wood in the trees and suddenly you've got a six hour game i know you like a challenge my regulars are tryhards yeah that is probably the case <laughs> My guys are a lot more casual, I think. Most of the, this is a thing, like a lot of the people who watch this stream are playing on HD. And um, so when I try and host a game on Voobly, it's it's very hard and it takes a long time to get players. Whereas when I host one on HD, the lobby fills like in seconds. And obviously that is then reflected in the skill level as well, because generally speaking, um, players who play on Voobly are a little bit, well, they're more used to the, the speed of Voobly because it is faster. But they're also generally a little bit higher rated, a little bit more like... Because obviously to go and download Voobly, you're already pretty invested in the game. And it's kind of like the next step, right? You play HD and you keep playing HD to a certain point. But once you get to a certain skill level, there's not really any games for you on HD anymore. And so when you go to Voobly, that's like the next step. It's like you want to challenge yourself. That's where you go to Voobly at that point. Um, that's not always the case, but obviously that's generally speaking what happens. And so as a result, obviously when you get team games on Voobly with regulars, they're going to be higher rated. That's absolutely, that's absolutely true. What is Pike Patrol? Um, I, I see if we can find another example of it because it's happened a little bit. The, uh, the yellow, yeah, the yellow skirms were doing it earlier on. Uh, Miguel in the back, pushing Matthias off of the gold. Uh, but Matthias will be in the castle age in just a second, as is Timotheus here. Aren't they cute with their matching names? Isn't it cute? But uh, he's in a bit of trouble. What is not cute is his villagers. He's had to build a tower in his wood line. He wasn't able to wall it up. Uh, his brother's in here fighting versus Matthias, though. He's going to get a good fight. Miguel making scouts. He is in the castle age. So that's going to be nice. And what did I say? When you uh, when you commit to skirms, you do leave, leave yourself wide open to a, um, a mass night well, mass night rush. However, with the number of skirms that he has, wait, hold on. I just realized Matthias is here as well. It's like both of them here. I thought he was fighting red for a second, but when you have that many skirms with Bodkin Arrow and, and the elite skirmisher upgrade, you actually do a lot of damage. He can actually one-shot villagers right now. He's at that point. He's at that critical mass. He's going doubt style on them. Don't doubt the doubt. Elite Skirm coming in hot. At TC. It's going to be denied. Many elements of doubt here. The mass Skirm and the TC denial on 70%. Uh, Timotheus actually does pose a real threat to these knights. Because first of all, they're Britain knights. So they don't have bloodlines. 
And secondly, they don't have plus two defense. So three pierce armor. That means the skirms do two hits. That means they have to hit the, uh, sorry, two damage per hit. That means they have to hit the knights 50 times. So 50, 50 times. Not too much of a problem when you've got 37 skirmishers on the map, is it? Uh, however, I mean, there's fights going on or breaking out all over the place here. Dugao get a counter attack at Timotheus' base. And oh, wow, that is a... <laughs> that is a mass relocation of Vils. And that looks like my TC from last game. No room at the end. TC is full. TC is full, guys. Get out of here. Well, that is a lot of units from Dugao up in the north there. 38 military. Now, Timotheus has more military, but he's now having to bring it back home. And Miguel is starting to get more and more knights out. And of course... Since we're not playing on the Wallalo Kingdoms mod, the knights don't have bloodlines here for the Japanese player. They would love to make some bloodlined knights, but it's just not available. So it's going to end up being one of those games. Mass archers. We might start seeing some mangonels coming out. Uh, these are the Japanese. These, this blue player, Miguel, sorry, Dugao, is Japanese. So mangonels is going to be effective here, but obviously against the knights, it can be very easily dealt with. Mateus now coming over to help his brother as they both bring all their armies back. And this is really hurting his eco. But who lost more eco? Um, Timotheus on 34 villagers or Miguel on 38? Well, you do the math. 38 is greater than 30, um, 34. So Miguel isn't hurting as hard as Timotheus here. And even if Timotheus is score leading, that can be a bit misleading. Although they are going to get a great fight here now as Dugao finds himself out of position and outgunned. He can't get out of there. Matthias taking him out with the knights, surrounded by skirms. And watch the KD of Timotheus here. 73 kills going up. Fionor, the yellow player, getting a fantastic KD. This is like a really good performance from the Irish Irish brothers, but I've got to say, I mean, a lot of the aggression does seem to be coming out of the the Brazilians here. I mean, they do seem to be the ones raiding a lot more. Dugao coming in on the left side, hitting the villas on the, the wood. Miguel kind of coming in here and raiding these, these farms. And Melkor it, it is pretty open to it. He's not walled up. It continues to keep pushing in. And Miguel keeps finding villas. Both of them had a lot of idle time. They might have um, an okay economy, I guess. I mean, uh, Melkor and, well, Matthias is, is the same vil count as, as Dugao. But uh, Timotheus is, is definitely down now by a long way. He needs to get his eco back in shape. Fortunately, he does have a lot of military. He does have a lot of skirms, which he can deal with Dugao's crossbows. But he kind of needs to counterattack at some point. And Dugao is ready and waiting with the mangonel. And if that counter-attack comes in, it might just go in headlong into a mangonel. So, Timotheus needs to do a bit of damage. He's, her, Eco's hurting. It is a mess. Look at those vills. I think like his whole economy is on wood right now. <laughs> he needs to get farms up and uh, needs the wood to do it. But uh, it's, it's, it's messy. There comes the mangonel from Dugao. And he is pike patrolling as well. He keeps doing it. Which is also a little bit dangerous, because if you do start pike patrolling into a mangonel, your unit's going to be very, very grouped up. So, better watch out. You better not cry if that mangonel hits. He's just going to have to have to take it on the chin. But, uh, yeah, so, Brazilians looking very good now. They might not have the score lead, but as I say, score can be a bit misleading. I think the Brazilians are way ahead at this point in the game. They're definitely further ahead in development. I think we have... Uh, ballistics done on Dugao's crossbows and at some point Yellow will want to move away from skirms as well he will want to get out of that sort of rut I suppose it's great it's fine to open it's fine to go elite skirms in the early castle age but just want to get away from that as the game goes on dog's been left alone for too long gonna get scary exactly bad rang it is Dugao is a beast um, actually, that's a point. I don't know. Did you do you have uh, Dugao on Snapchat T90? He posted. Are you in the Are you in the ASC group? Um, Dugao posted this like massive pizza uh, after Brazil B beat Brazil A. Um, he posted this huge like 
It must have been about a meter long. This pizza was massive. Oh my goodness. Big hits coming from the mangonels though. Mateus is here with the mangonel, uh, with the knights to take them out. But uh, Timotheus is going to be ran down, I feel, by the knights of Miguel and the, the backup. I don't know. It's going to be hard for him to hold this. Uh, but yeah, he poses this picture. Massive celebratory pizza. But did you see it? Oh, you don't have him. Okay, unfortunate. I thought you had him. Because I was going to ask... It's like, I've never seen this before. It was like a massive square pizza, right? But in the top corner, it'd been cut out and it looked like it was cake. Chocolate topped cake. And I don't know if that's how they do it in Brazil, but if I was ordering pizza and cake together, I wouldn't want them in the same box. Because that cake must have been greasy as, as... I don't even know. A greasy sock. It would have been disgusting. Oh, what's going on with that? You... Yeah, there was... I, I, I don't know, it was on Snapchat, so the picture's gone. Unless it was still there, maybe I can find it. It was super weird. Yeah, it's gone. It's gone. Can't see it now. <laughs> it, yeah, it sounds gross. Like, how, how is the chocolate not melted? It's super weird. It was like in the same box. It was like the corner had been cut away. And instead of pizza, it was like a cake. A celebratory um, Nation's Cup victory cake. Greasy, melted chocolate pizza cake. Oh, man. I feel sick just thinking about it, but I don't know. Oh, hello. Ghost Racer, man. Welcome to the Church of Wallalo. Thanks for the sub. Can we see some love in the chat? Daddy, how much do you squat? Not as much as I would like, powder sniff girls. I don't want to say. You'd probably judge me horrendously. <laughs> Not as much as I like, let me put it that way. But at least I'm trying, right? That's what matters. Dugal here, I, in, we're not really, the game is just a backdrop. The game is a backdrop for the, uh, for the chat here. As um, Dugal and Miguel are looking Super, super fly right now. And I'd, I'd just say that Mateus and Timotheus are playing very reactive in this game. They've kind of been defending a lot more. Dugao's not even been touched. And you don't leave Dugao untouched. You want to be touching Dugao. Because he's going to start running away with this. He's on the way up to the Imperial Age. He's got like four TCs. Who knows? He might even have five. But... Once he gets to Imperial, obviously he'll finish up the Arbalest, which is going to be able to deal with knights very well. Although he might actually risk losing a lot of his army here, using these houses to kind of prevent Mateus from surrounding him. Now coming away from the houses, forget that idea, scrap that. Mateus is going to clean it up. But at what cost? At the cost of Dugao reaching Imperial and spamming... Um, spamming... Samurai? Maybe. Maybe that is the ultimate cost here, because the Samurai coming out, I knew it. I just knew it. And he's going to have a second castle up in a moment too. Dugao just lost most of his army. He's got six military left, five of which are Samurai, but it is happening, boys. The Samurai are coming in, and I think Dugao can kind of defend a little bit here with the Samurai. He can kind of force Mateus to take the fight by defending and not engaging. But he might have to go and bail Miguel out if he's not careful. Miguel doesn't have the most army either. And this is where I guess, you know, at any point in this game, Mateus and Timotheus have their biggest chance to equalize things out a little bit. They do need to do some eco damage right here. They are a little bit behind in Vils. They've been a little bit behind all game. And now with 34 knights running in, and a good number of crossbows and skirms. These are looking pretty good. Um, you don't see samurai out often. When do you think they are most viable? Well, it's kind of like um, a timing thing, I guess. If you're, if you're fast to the Imperial Age, samurai train really quickly, look. And you can spam them out very quickly and... You know, they're pretty formidable in, in the early Castle Age. Obviously, in this matchup, you've got a Britain player to contend with, and although Japanese um, samurai have decent pierce armor when they're elite, um, 
And when you've got the upgrades, they've got decent pierce armor. It's still, I think it's more of a speed thing. It, it might not be a long-term option because if the Britain player does manage to get Arbalest with 10, 11 range, if they get U Yeoman on that, um, obviously your Samuel aren't going to touch them. But when your opponents have Knights, you know, it's, it's a decent option. They, they train really quickly. They're very formidable units. The Elite Samurai upgrade's about to come in. And they hit hard. They hit fast. And against these Knights without Bloodlines, they'll actually do really well. Title needs to be changed. Yeah, sorry. I uh, forgot to update that. Here come the Samurai, though. And let's look at how this goes right now. Obviously, Matthias is fighting with Knights. Miguel's fighting with Knights. And then you've got Timotheus on the back with the crossbows. And that was a massacre. That was a massacre. How many, how many Samurai died? None. <laughs> he didn't lose a thing. He did not lose a thing. And that's what I'm talking about. Like, speed. Um... They, they're actually a pretty fast-moving unit as well, just in general. Obviously, they don't outrun knights, but if, you, if you're able to take the fight... He even took that fight uphill. And the knights are gone. And the uh, Samurai are even looking quite healthy. I mean, he didn't even lose half the health on those units. So, that's what I'm talking about. They don't outrun knights. Surely not. Not when knights have husbandry, they don't. Teutonic Knights. Oh, you Henry the Fortunate. <laughs> you got me. Jebated. What can I say? But uh, now Timotheus has Arbalest. 10 range. Now what's he going to do? This is where it gets a bit tough. Because they do have five, 5 Pierce armor. But obviously they're still taking 6 damage per shot. So they will die very quickly to this small number of arms. So at this point, he needs to add something else. That something else could be rams to close the gap and just force the fight. Or he can keep coming and use sheer numbers to try and overwhelm Timotheus. And Timotheus probably feels like he doesn't have enough here. And he's going to have to back away. That's scary. That is scary. I mean, they, they move quickly. But uh, this is nice. He's going to put house here to force a choke point, And he'll sit in that choke point, And then... The Gao can't really fight into that at all. He needs to get some siege to, uh, to to come forward with that if he wants to force the aggression. And that's the problem. You can use them defensively and you can use them when the fight is, is guaranteed to take place. But to actually push with them is quite difficult against an archer sieve. But what they could do alternatively is focus their attention on Mateus, force the engagement with him, and then Timotheus is forced to kind of come out and fight here. And defend his bro. Matthias at the back. This is this is not looking nice. It's very messy here. Castle going up to try and protect his villas. And obviously they're starting to get trade up as well. I don't know how they're going to trade when there's all these samurai in the middle. But yeah, like I say, the Arbalest are going to start running circles around these guys. And Timotheus keeps making these choke points with the houses. It's super smart. And it's going to win him the fight convincingly. Those, uh, those samurai don't even get close. So... We basically answered the question of when are Samurai viable, when you should use them. Right here, and not here. But uh, he's still looking for a, a sort of an inn. He's found one, he's on the left side. And uh, while the main army of Timotheus is, is grouped up on the right side, Dugao, it's all smoke and mirrors from Dugao. He's coming in on the left flank, breaking through the walls, and well, suddenly Timotheus is Eco's under a lot of pressure. And those Samurai do attack hella fast. Unfortunately, we're not on the Wallow Kingdoms mod to once again clarify that. No arson here. And with arson, these guys are scary. I mean, not only do they attack super quick and super hard, but with arson as well, doing extra two damage per Samurai per hit. That's brutal. It's savage. His TC is going to get wrecked. But uh, yeah, they, in 1v1, I think Samurai are a lot more viable. In this case right here, though, that is ugly. Dugao. Where's the siege, man? Did I just see... Onager? Is that what I just saw? I think that overlay is bugged. Let me check tech tree here. Yeah, he just researched Onager, but I swear the tech... Did, do you guys notice that it said Siege Onager up here? I'm sure it said Siege Onager. 
Obviously, Japanese don't get Siege on a Jew, and on a Jew is just research, so... Strange. But even, you know, even Onager here is actually a little bit of a difficult um, unit to run versus the Britons. He hasn't got Yeoman yet, but it's on the way. So he's going to have 11 range in a moment. And once you've got 11 range, even the Onagers are going to struggle. It's 8, eight range versus 11. Um, obviously, Siege Engineers is coming in, so it'll be 9 range versus 11. But with a good number of Arbalest, you can take down Onager, no problem at all. Um, as the Britons, at least, anyway. On the right side, the battle rages on. Miguel actually opting to go into Longbows here. And obviously, Longbow is the better choice later you go, because they have the extra range over the Arbalest. And the Elite Longbow will hit harder as well. So it's... Good to get longbow if you can, but longbow takes longer <laughs> as you have to get the castles up first. You obviously have to, um, uh, you can't, yeah, I guess you're not going to be making longbows in the castle age. You're going to be going crossbow, so you already have an existing number of crossbows to upgrade into Arbalest, making Arbalest a, a faster option as well. But uh, Dugao here is still struggling against Timotheus. Timotheus. Hasn't got that many units over here. He's actually... Yeah, he's bringing more over now to deal with Degau's aggression. While Miguel will push on the right side. Killing off the Arbalest of Mateus. Very easily done. And Miguel with quite a lot of skirms mixed into his army as well. Also finishing Yeoman. But no elite longbowman tech for him just yet. I saw a castle go down to Halves with Arson. Yeah, T90. It's ridiculous, man. That like, Arson is so strong. And it the thing is as well, it's it's it, it really makes the, the strong infantry like way stronger, but it also buffs the weak infantry to the point where they can tear down buildings as well, which is probably the more overpowered thing. Because, I mean, you can run into your enemy's TC with 40 uh, champions and take it down with or without Arson. Obviously, with Arson, it's going to go down faster, but when you can do that with Karambit Warriors, which happened earlier to me, Akino ran into my TC with like 40 uh, Karambit Warriors, and they cost nothing. They're like dirt cheap, and you can just run into your TC and take it down in like three seconds flat. That is ridiculous. Um, and I think that's where Arson probably is a bit strong. Um, unfortunately, like with techs in this game, it affects all units e equally, and... Affecting the, the weaker units like that is just, yeah, it, it really tips the balance. But Miguel here pushing through, and once again, as I said, the Brazilians here in control of this game. They are really in control. Full control. No problem for them. Uh, Mateus actually getting the Rams out, though. This is this is kind of what's needed versus the Britons. Obviously, Degau's going for the, the Onager play because he's a baller. But uh, he is... Like, all of this siege right here is so exposed. And those Onagers can't do shit. They can't even get into range of the Arbalest. So, this is why I was saying he needs... Well, really, he needs to get um, rams. But either way, he is still doing damage. He's taking down two TCs here, so I can't criticize too much. But on the right side, you see the difference. Mateus was doing rams here, capped ram. And they take a lot of arrow fire, so it, it makes it easier to, for your own army to do damage. Um, obviously, Dugao went into Elite Samurai, though. He's currently finishing up Kappa Peruto. So that his TCs can pack and unpack ridiculously fast. And hey, you know what? He doesn't... <laughs> he doesn't need Arbalest. It's no problem. The Arbalest from the Brits might have 11 range, but Degau has 17 range on his trebuchets. Come at me, he says, using his trebuchets to take down Timotheus. <laughs> Degau, man, he's such a funny player. And I really like the fact that he's using Kata Peruto as well, and using that mechanic of the, the unique tech. He's just spamming traps. <laughs> and the funny thing is, it's actually working. <laughs> He's just using the trebs to outrange the Briton Arbalest. And obviously, it's one shot kill as well. Since they do 201 damage. <laughs> oh, I love this. This is brilliant. Look at this. Look at this. He hasn't even got chemistry. He doesn't need it. He doesn't need it. Just, just 
They're dropping. They're dropping like flies. And obviously, because the trebuchet has 150 pierce armor, they have to shoot them 150 times. They have 150 health. So <laughs> what wins? Who wins the fight? 10 trebuchets or 100 Briton Arbalest? A lot, of, a lot of people ask that question. How do you deal with the Briton uh, longbow? How do you deal with mass Briton longbow? I'll tell you. Mass trebuchet. Even better if they're uh, Briton trebs or Japanese trebs. In fact, the ironic thing is, Briton trebs are even better at this. Because in the expense, look at this! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. Timotheus is going to be feeling so salty about this, I feel. He's like, I can't believe he's doing this. I can't stop it. it <laughs> what is this? Why is this happening to me? <laughs> but yeah, the, the even funny thing is, like, the Britain Trebs in the expansions, when you get Warwolf, the Britain Trebs, do, they're 100% accurate and they do blast damage. So if he was to hit one shot in here, all of these Arbalest would die. But look how quickly they pack and unpack. It's just... It's filthy. It is filthy. <laughs> He's just not stopping. The trebuchet train from Dugao is not stopping. It is going straight through. It's the non-stop service to GG Town. Timotheus here can't escape. The endless 90 kilogram projectiles. Even when he is 200 meters away, he cannot escape. Which is the range that the Briton longbow can fire. 210 meters, I think, is the longest recorded shot from a Briton longbow. But I think that's like a... a I don't know if it actually penetrated anything. Oh, there you go. He's just upgraded chemistry now, just to make it a little bit more... Um, you know, to improve the aesthetic a little bit. I, I can't believe he's actually getting away with this. It's it's filthy. It is filthy. I'm just enjoying this so much. We're just going to watch this for the rest of the game. Until Timotheus has no arbalest left. I wish I was a 90 kilogram projectile. Me too, fat and moist. 90 kilograms is an ideal body weight, I feel. Well, maybe not ideal. It, it depends on your build, right? I'm like 75 and I'm, I'm okay with that, but... Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> he cannot escape. He's he's starting to go cavalier, but Dagao keeps making samurai as well. <laughs> oh my god. This is like top 10 worst anime deaths. Dagao with his Japanese trebuchet. <laughs> he, can't, he can't do anything. <laughs> He can't do anything. <laughs> GG is being called. <laughs> Timotheus and Matthias. Given up the game, throwing down the gauntlet. <laughs> Dagao with the victory right there. It's all Dagao. Miguel, you did nothing. It's all it's all Dagao. Look at this. He like comes in here and he just slowly works his way forward. <laughs> Oh, I want to know how. <laughs> I want to know how many kills he got. This is ridiculous, man. Okay, he got two hundred ninety-nine units. It was all Dagal there. I mean, ugh, Miguel killed a hundred more units, but <laughs> there you go. That's one for the uh, the history books. Next time you see someone on Reddit asking. How do you deal with Mass Britain longbows? How do you deal with Mass Britain arbalest? Just send them this video. Dugout teaching 101, the 101 right there. <laughs> that was so brilliant. I want to see that done with Britain Trebs though now. I, I think that obviously Britain Trebs as well. Oops, that's the wrong, the wrong thing. Um, I think Britain Trebs are even more entertaining, I guess.